and welcome back to another video everybody and today well today today's Sunday today's a day where I came back to the earth living again because I've been down for the last three solid days so Thursday Friday Saturday completely down sick as a dog in bed unable to move pretty sure I was dead updated my will drove my family crazy and whether it was a COVID or was it a cold I don't really care I don't really know I know that I was pretty sure I was gone and that is coming from a man who thinks he's dying when I get hangnail so um, don't act like you guys aren't the same way but I am back amongst the living woke up this morning and felt so much better yes my nose is probably a little pink but I am alive and why did not why did we not test why didn't I not test myself for COVID because I don't really care if it's COVID because I believe in the same rules that happened before COVID which is if you're sick stay the hell away from everybody else because I don't want you damn cold and I'm not gonna go out and give anybody my cold so yes I locked myself down and stayed away from the family and everybody but Oh, it's so nice to be outside getting that real all-natural vitamin D. All right, what's behind me? I got to share this with you because on Thursday morning when I came back from my trip to Atlanta, Georgia for work, which was a blast, shout out to Atlanta, what a fun city, is my wife thought it'd be cute to do a funny little prank on me and put a picture, or I'm sorry, put a whole, whatever you want to call this. This is, this is three guys at a strip club yes that's what it is that is in my front yard and yes my neighbors I don't know how they feel about it I don't know how he feels about it I, I pretty much know how they feel about it because they don't talk to us they don't like us that much either so I in the end he's, he's cool but nobody said anything so far but I was mortified what the f is this? what in the hell did you do what in the hell did you do no, you didn't do that. Why would you do that? Oh my God, who did that? <laughs> who did that? Got you back for trying to scare me in the bathroom. Oh, you mother! Well, my wife thinks she's funny. Well, I was out of town, built this in the front yard. <laughs> and pleased because my wife is extremely creative. And yes, those are real, real hundred dollar bills that say motion picture money on them. She went all the way with this thing, even with the OC Motivator merch, which you can, by the way, get on the merch shelf here or at ocmotivator.com. And uh, this is our Halloween decorations this year my wife is something isn't she i mean that's just awesome i mean she went to the extent to make sure that she we can call her peaches we can call her whatever you guys want to call her but she is gold so and those shoes those shoes i mean it's just i don't know i don't know what else to say folks but uh you know subscribe if you think it's cool like if you think it's cool comment that we are horrible neighbors with a cop car and a bunch of pink cars and Lamborghini and a bright green car and all the other stuff that we do feel free to comment about that stuff but anyways just had to share that with you because it is pretty damn hilarious let's jump into my beautiful lime green OC motivator mobile here and have a conversation <laughs> that damn door again <laughs> have a conversation that hopefully will save some of you one of you I don't care how many of you have saved somebody a disastrous outcome in the future. This video will have been worth it despite me being still a little bit under the weather and probably having to take a few breaks and a few edits in this thing. Let's go ahead and start this thing off and go park where I can get some, some peace and privacy to have this deep conversation with you all. All right, got a little AC going because Right now, every temperature I'm in, I'm clammy and sweaty and miserably uncomfortable. Oof, I'm still fighting the tail end of this thing, but oh, I feel those ventilated seats and they definitely come in handy at times like this. So let's jump in and talk about how to stop some of you from making a humongous mistake because I was looking at my demographics and the age group and literally at least almost half of you 
are under 40 who watch my channel and and your men and us men tend to when it comes to cars do things out of pure unadulterated desire and passion and impulse and it's okay sometimes I'm the king of doing those things that's why I have so many cars in my driveway but I'm 53 so I want you to look at this and you young guys out there that are watching my channel stick around for this I need you to hear this before you go get yourself in trouble and I'm doing this because I wish someone would have done this for me I wish someone would have shot a video like this for me because in 2004 I was 34 years old I was hanging out with a bunch of guys who had a bunch of cool cars and we were all into the Mercedes and BMW stuff and it was when Mercedes was coming out with all those AMG 55 versions the E55 and the CL55 and the S55s those were the coolest things ever they were supercharged V8s and they had about 500 horsepower and that was a huge deal in 2004 2005 and of course everybody wanted the E55 or the CL55 or the S55 and the perfect car to me at the time was the CL55 AMG it was a two-door coupe where all the windows went down and it was just spectacular it had four seats but only had two doors and it was sleek looking and I'll put a picture of mine up on the screen it was a killer car and it was super fast for its time and even today if you find an old one on the road they're still they get up a move and they have every possible option you could possibly imagine so for months I did the research on that car I worked every possible angle to figure out how I could afford that car and like many of you are doing with your Hellcat plan right now you start to imagine yourself in that car you start to see yourself in that car you envision taking that car and showing all of your friends that you got that car I didn't go to cars and coffee back in the day but now you get to see yourself imagine yourself going to cars and coffee and I'm telling you it is that that moment where you think when you pull in everybody just stops and gazes at that Hellcat you're rolling in for me it was that CL55 AMG that I'm gonna roll into every office meeting every event no matter where I go I'm gonna pull that thing up front it is the car that's gonna scream out to everybody I am a badass way more of a badass than you no matter what you're driving I got this thing Sticker price was $126,000 for that car. 34 years old, buying a $126,000 car. Now, I thought I was bulletproof. I had a few hundred thousand dollars in the bank. I was making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. I had the world by the tail. Our company was doing great. And keep in mind, this is 2004, 2005, and I'm still cruising, making that payment, no problem. I think I bought it tail end of 04, maybe the beginning, beginning of 05, and it was it was everything that I had imagined everything you're thinking about you buying the Hellcat right now when you get it it's gonna be amazing that supercharger wine the way people treat you when you roll up the, is that a Hellcat at the stoplights and the kids wanna wanna you know bow to you and jump up and down and scream as you drive by because they got to see the glorious Hellcat in its in its natural environment well that was me in that CL55 AMG and boy it was amazing I'd walk out to that car in my suit and tie in the morning and I would jump in that thing started up and I mean it was just it sounded amazing I knew that every neighbor was jealous the second they heard that engine the car payment on that car was eighteen hundred and ninety one dollars a month eighteen hundred and ninety one dollars a month let that set in at 34 years old to pay almost nineteen hundred dollars a month to impress the rest of the world while also bringing tremendous joy to me which it certainly did but the point I want to get across to all of you is that when you get the keys to the Hellcat and you take on that big payment which by the way a Hellcat at ninety thousand dollars with ten thousand dollars down for sixty months you're looking at about $1,835 a month. 
that is a massive car payment. If you pay a markup, it's even worse. But let me tell you what happened. So I'm making that payment when things are good. Things are great, as a matter of fact. I've got 60 months on that thing. I don't remember what the term was on that loan. I think it was longer than that because it was such an expensive car. That I, I figured it was no big deal. I was making great money. The economy was good. It was 2005. I thought I was a delicate genius. Everything I touched turned to large amounts of cash. I could not possibly fathom me ever not having money again. I was good, so I bought that car. And I bought it with a big, huge smile on my face. I made that payment every month, and I'll tell you a little secret I haven't shared with anybody since back then, which was about the third or fourth payment I remember thinking, man, this thing is not that big of a difference than my S500 that I had that I was paying $600 on because I bought it used. But now I'm paying three times that amount on this car. I've already shown it to all my friends. Yes, everyone clapped standing ovations. I mean, envied me for having that car, asked for fun rides. I mean, it was, I mean, I remember taking people for rides in that thing and just blowing their minds at how fast it was. It was everything you would expect it to be. But about three or four payments in, I was, I was thinking, what the hell's wrong with me? I could go buy another house. I could go to put this money in the bank. I mean, I could have two or three different cars. This is crazy that I let myself get sucked into this thing. But I built myself up into committing that I'm going to do it, telling myself everything I wanted to hear, then ending up in a dealership with the guy who told me it's one of the rarest cars ever. It's going to be worth a lot more money someday. Don't worry about it. This thing's a spectacular car, blah, blah, blah. Heck, I, you know, I believed it all. You're going to get more girlfriends. You're going to get more of the ladies. I was single at the time. I heard it all. Again, three to four months later, I'm scratching my head. Why the hell am I paying almost $1,900 a month? Then I found out how much insurance was for a 34, 35-year-old guy with maybe one or two speeding tickets on a 500 horsepower, supercharged, high-end, exotic Mercedes-Benz. And it was ridiculous. It was another, what, three or $4,000 a year. It was just stupid money. So all in now, I'm paying a fortune for that car. Not to mention when it needs brakes, brakes are three to $4,000. Oil changes are $350. Anything I do, tires are thousands of dollars. Everything on that car is gonna be expensive. But at least I have the warranty that would keep me safe. Well, let me fast forward a little bit where 2007 kicked in. By then, I I'm not really happy I'm making that payment. I'd considered selling the car multiple times, but I was upside down on the car because I didn't put a lot of money down. And the more you pay for a car, unfortunately, the more you're gonna lose and the faster you're gonna lose it. And that's what happened with me. That $126,000 car found its way to 100,000 really quick, and then it found its way to 80,000 really quick. And then the more miles I put, put on it, the quicker it found its way down to 50, 60, I think it's $60,000, $65,000 by the time the warranty ran out. The warranty ends up running out because I put so many miles on it because I love driving that car. I drove the warranty right off of that thing. The economy completely tanks in 2007, but I'm still paying on that car. I'm still paying $1,900 a month on that car. And now everything around me is falling apart. I'm, I mean, I'm upside down on my house now. I'm upside down on my other cars. I mean, you name it, it's happening. Heck, I met my, got my wife who wasn't my wife and we ended up with a baby and that's coming, but I'm still plugging away the $1,900 a month because you know what I can't do? I can pretty much default on everything in my life and be okay, but if I default on my car, it's gonna be very hard to walk to work. So the one thing I had to keep paying was that AMG Mercedes, that $1,900 a month. And let me just tell you, you don't skip one of those payments because you skip one payment, the next month you're at $3,600, then you're at $4,500 and $6,000. Before you, you skip two or three of those payments and you are so far behind 
you can't get yourself out of it. It's such a hole. You you might as well just own the fact that you're going to be in a repo situation, which I would never do. Loving cars, I had to keep making that payment. That payment hung around my neck like the biggest weight you could possibly imagine. Eating that $1,900 car payment when I was having to short sale my house and burn through tons of cash just to keep things going while my pay dropped in 07 because the entire economy tanked and of course the real estate market tanked. I lost tons of assets, tons of cash, you name it, it was ugly. But that damn car continued to haunt the living daylights out of me. I share this with you because an $18, $1,900 car payment in 2004 and five was a massive deal. It was a bigger deal than a $1,900 car payment is today based on simple inflation. But I'll tell you, for many of you, based on what everything else is costing you, it's very likely going to feel exactly the same as it felt to me, which was, I, I, I remember praying and just thinking, how, you know, show me a way to get out of this. I was so far upside down on that car that by the time the warranty went out, I was so stuck in it that I couldn't get rid of it that now I was responsible for fixing it. When the screen, the navigation screen went out and that was $3,000, I looked at the screen one day and I thought, I'm just not going to have any screen. I'm not going to have any radio. I'm not going to have any nav. As long as the car keeps running, I'm good. A week later, it came on for no reason and started working again. Then I walked out and the suspension was out. The front was slammed to the ground. So I took it to the dealership and they went through and checked everything out and they came back and said, well, we've got an estimate. We went ahead and knocked off 20% because you're a good customer. You bought the car here. We want to really take care of you. We understand this is going to be really, really hard for you to swallow, but we've got this estimate down. It's $10,488, $10,500 to get the car back to the way, just to be dr basically drivable. That was how bad it was. And I said, so, we're, you know, I noticed you guys were able to get the car to lift back up. They said, oh yeah, we're able to reset some things and make it go back up, but it's gonna continuously fail. Well, I don't have $10,500 at this point. I've got a $1,900 car payment and I'm screwed. And we ended up making a deal to trade it in. And let me just tell you, this is embarrassing to share embarrassing to share and by the way in between all this time there were a couple times I did I did consider trading it in to get out of it but every time I was always a minimum of 20 plus thousand dollars upside down and in this situation I was still 20 plus like three years in I was still twenty thousand dollars upside down maybe it was four years in upside down in that car and now I have a $10,500 repair bill and the dealership says, well, we can trade it in. I go, what do you have that I can trade it in on? And they have this white E320, I think it was. I have a picture of that, I think. It was a white E320, it was like 39 grand or something like that. And it was as base model as you can get. And I said, look, I'll, you know, I'll take it. Let me check with my credit union, see if they'll finance the negative in. And that's where the nightmare quadrupled, okay? And I'm just wanting you to think about this when you're jumping into a $1,900 Hellcat or even putting a bunch down and paying $1,000 on a Hellcat. You still could be very stuck like I was on this car. And they offered me, they offered me a whopping, I think it was $11,000, $11,500 for that, for that AMG Mercedes I paid $126,000 for, let's say it was four years before. Four years before, and I've lost well over $100,000 on that car because I've driven the wheels off of it. And I know you're gonna say, but my Hellcat's gonna hold its value. No, it's not. Stop being stupid, you're smarter than that. It's not going to hold its value, I promise you it's not. Because you're gonna do all kinds of hooligan crap in that thing, and you're gonna beat the crap out of that car and nobody in the world wants to buy used Hellcats. It just really used Hellcats. Maybe he's still under warranty Hellcats, okay. But long after that thing's out of warranty, nobody's gonna want your old beat up Hellcat. Trust me when I tell you this. So they offered me, he's like 11 grand for that. 
that car, and I couldn't friggin' believe it. I couldn't believe it because I had close to twenty thousand dollars. I had to roll in to that E class, used E class, which basically was the 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 housewife car of the town I live in. But it was still a Mercedes, and that would at least at least be a car like that would hold a little ego in my big ego mind. But it was thirty nine grand. And uh, and I said, I, I need you to give me... I remember begging the guy to go to like 12. And the salesman took me to the general manager's office. And he said, he said, look, what's the problem? He goes, we're like, I don't know, it's like $1,200 away from making a deal on his trade. And the guy goes, come on, you're a vice president. The time of the company I was at, you're a vice president. What's, a, what's 1200 bucks? And I remember taking both of my shoes off standing in his office. This is honest to God, true story. Took both of my shoes off and held them up. I said, you see these shoes? These shoes cost me $59 at Macy's. They're the cheapest shoes I've ever owned. I used to wear shoes that were three grand. Now this is the only shoes I can afford to buy. And I don't, I, I need this 1200. I need you to do me good on this call my trade in. You guys sold me this thing for 126000 And the guy goes, dude took his shoes off. Give him give him the other 1200 and do the deal. So we did the deal. I drove off in my E-Class, and I wrote out the rest of the recession, and I still had a stout payment on that E-Class. I mean, it might have been $900 or something like that. I can't remember. Whatever it was, it was maybe 1000 bucks. It was speed the hell out of $1,900 a month. But I... I just barely survived that up until things got so bad that I finally ended up, you know, buying a, my, you know, my parents old BMW, uh, six series and I ended up selling that E class and taking a huge bath on that E class and clawing my way back out of the hole. But since then, many of you have watched this channel a long, long time. You've seen that I've not bought a car and lost a ton of money on it. I've not put myself in a position where I could be upside down on a car. My wife's car has equity in it. Even though it's a lease, I could buy it out right now for more than what they're selling for. My Lamborghini, I've got but almost no balance, no loan balance on that car. That thing will be paid off this year. It's just done, nothing on that thing. This thing I bought at Sticker, I'm probably five to seven grand upside down since prices are sliding so bad. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. I can afford to get myself out of that. My daughter's car, put enough money down. We're good on that car. The cop car, of course, you know, that thing's is 12,000 bucks, no big deal. So bottom line is I'm not, in all the cars I bought, you've watched me buy and sell. I, I may have lost a grand here, grand there, but I made it back on YouTube. But I've never put myself in that position again since that day. And that's why I'm making this video and maybe it's a little bit longer, but I'm hoping this sinks in to, to one of you out there where you're on the cusp of pulling the trigger on this big, huge car payment and that you just stop yourself and wait. And just wait, especially in this economy, because you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know where, the, where things are gonna head to, but with interest rates the way they are, car prices the way they are, and all the other unknowns that are out there right now, I promise you that you will be tired of that car payment long before you'll be able to get out of that car payment. Just write that down right now that you, that what I'm saying, you will be tired of that car payment long before you're able to escape it. If you have the cash to buy one of these cars, do it. If you've spent your whole life and you're the other half of the group that are over 40, let's say, that have reached a place in your life, you've saved all your money, I don't believe you should, you should think you're going to take your money with you. I think you should spend it and bounce the last check you ever right before you die. But for the younger guys out there, don't do what I did. Because I'll tell you, I remember being on the phone with collection companies fighting over credit card bills while I'm sitting in a CL55 AMG with a check engine light on it. I mean, it was just, it was a trap that I could not escape. So be careful. Think your decisions through carefully. Hellcats are fun. They're cool. It's going to be great taking around your friends. After all that's over with, 
it's going to be boring, it's not going to be as exciting, it's just another car, you're driving to work every day, and you get, every month you get reminded of the dumbass decision you made to jump into a $1,900 car payment. And I promise you, unless you're making a few hundred thousand dollars a year, and unless you have no bills and have no plans on having any children or getting married or taking on any other responsibilities or buying a house or anything else, I wouldn't do it. I would seriously not do it. I would go get yourself a used one or I'd go get yourself a scat pack and enjoy the hell out of it. Hell, get yourself an RT. Now is not the time to take risks with your long-term financial well-being and hang in that humongous car payment around your neck. But with all that said, you're going to do what you're going to do and you're going to do it anyways. And if you do, hey man, more power to you. Have fun. Enjoy it while you got it. And I hope I hope your outcome is much better than mine. And for those of you that think that Hellcat's going to hold its value and be worth so much more money, so that's why you should buy it. If you're banking on a car holding its value, you almost deserve what you get. You almost deserve the pain that you will have coming to you when that car depreciates so fast that you can't catch it. It's, it's, it's sad for me to have to say that, but I'm being direct with you all as friends and family here on YouTube that I want to make sure you don't make a bad decision and that you slow your roll a little bit and don't worry, there's hundreds of thousands of these cars out there and hundreds of thousands that'll be coming for sale. You'll be able to pick them up later on. You'll be able to pick them up used. You'll be able to pick them up with warranties. You'll be able to pick them up for much better prices as we're already seeing right now. Everywhere online, the prices are straightening themselves out. You don't have to have it right now, and don't put yourself in a bad spot. I hope this video sinks in. Hope it didn't come off negative. Hope it came off as caring as I meant it to come off. And I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to go crawl back in bed, pound some NyQuil, come back to fight another day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.